the road mayor there, asking Parliament to intervene, not only to ensure that KCCI has adequate funding, but also to ensure that the African Development Bank does not cancel the loan it extended to Kampala capital city. We have heard a lot from the politicians, so today we'll be hearing from the management. In studio, I have engineer David Luimbazi, who is the Deputy Executive Director at KCCA. Good evening, engineer, and thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you so much for hosting me. Good evening, listeners. Well, uh, as I was making this uh, preamble to this discussion, I saw you smiling, and you seemed to be shocked by some of the things I was saying. What, what has amused you in, in what I've read out? Uh, what I mean, the thing that amuses me mm. is uh, the, politi- the, the political language that is used to kind of uh, escalate a situation that is a, a storm in a teacup. Really? Oh, yes, a storm mm. in a teacup. Because now, I'll, give, I'll start off with the issue of recovering the $350 billion. We've known about the $350 billion for quite a long while, for about almost 9 to 12 months ago. Mm. In, and we've, we disclosed the same to council. At the time, the major issue was the, the council's uh, take was that the unit cost of roads were highly inflated. Mm. They didn't look at the fact that they normally for this tend, for these road contracts, we tender them out. There is severe competition. Prices get depressed when you have a lot of competition. Mm. And as a result of that, instead of having, I think the estimated tender was about 10 billion shillings per kilometer. We ended up tendering at 6 billion shillings per kilometer. Contracting at 6 billion. Mm. So if, effectively we saved 4 billion shillings per kilometer. That's what translates into the 350 billion you talk. I mean, actually, it's about 200 billion that you are talking about. Because now it's 200 billion when you add on the VAT, because we have to redeem VAT. VAT is about 109 billion. Then you come to about 309 billion. Then plus uh, the money which the president directed, we should not import built buses. Now, because we don't, we're not importing built buses, we decided to reallocate that money for eco buses towards roads. Mm. That's what makes the 350 billion. So for somebody to say that they recovered money, it's quite a shock. Uh, it, I mean, it is in language that is colored to, I don't know what to call it, to make it appear like there's fantasy happening in cases here. We are fully aware of the obligations we have to the public to protect public resources. Mm. We cannot abuse those resources. Then, of course, the other issue of MPs being shocked. The the duty to appropriate funds for Kampala Capital City Authority mm. lies in Parliament. If we don't get sufficient funding to finance these roads and take them from the situation they're in, mm. everyone has a role to play. Mm. Okay, Everyone has a role play, to play. And especially Parliament, in terms of giving us resources required to fix the network. Everyone knows that our economy is not doing so well. We don't have money for everything. Mm. We cannot fix all the roads in the city provide uh, education for all UPE students, provide health care to all, everyone because health care in Mulago is free. So government has to prioritize. Now, with the limited resources we have, we get what we get, and with that we try to provide the roads that can fit within the budget we get. So for somebody to expect us to be magicians at City Hall, maybe we use our salaries to fix these roads, is really thinking, mm. I mean, asking for too much. Okay. So that's why you saw me, I mean, not smiling per se, but shocked. Shocked that people can talk as though they don't live in this country. All right. Let's try to dig deeper on those uh, two particular issues. Um, the decision by the shock, the fact that the MPs were shocked, but also uh, the issue of uh, <clears throat> saving $350 billion. Well, mm. um, let's begin with this issue of saving $350 billion. Well, the Lord Mayor has been on record, even on this table and in council, that uh, the cost of actually working on the roads in Kampala has been inflated. When you compare with other places, you guys are spending too much on a kilometer compared to other places. And he has been talking about this thing for quite some time. At one point, they requested that you should bring the contracts in council, but we saw you were also refusing, although you have just said here that you did finally go to to council. Let's get the picture straight. What's the cost of doing a kilometer of a road in Kampala from your experience as an engineer? Again, this is politicizing a process. This is a market-driven process. If you're buying a shirt, Mm. I wonder where you bought your shirt. The market determines if somebody has imported that shirt you're putting on, Mm. it's going to 
put it on the market. He has to compete with other sellers of that shirt. Mm. And you'll pick the one who's giving you the best price. Mm. So similarly for roads, we advertise these roads. That's open international bidding. Anyone can participate. No one is restrained. Mm. Okay? Mm. If the Lord Mayor had a contractor that was cheaper, he would have advised that contractor to come and bid rather than wait Mm. after the outcome of an open tendering process. This is a, a tried and tested procedure which is only done by KCC, it's done by UNRWA and all ministries, departments and agencies, whether they're financed by the World Bank, African Development Bank, even government of Uganda financing. It's a similar process. After you do that process, you cannot ask me mm. why to justify what the market has delivered. The market has given. This is what we want. We want an eight, eight, seven meter wide road with two lanes, with a walkway, with covered drains, with lights, uh, I mean, and all attendant landscaping that may be required. Unless we say, let's take out the lights, let's take out the walkways. But if these are the these are the specifications of what we want, the market will return a result. You cannot ask the public officer to explain what the market has dictated. That's asking for too much. I either decide to throw out the rules, and we walk in with bidders who we say maybe this one is going to do it at this cost, mm. or. We accept the rules because this, this, these, are, these rules are enacted into law. There's a public procurement and disposal of public assets act, which we follow and comply with, and regulations as well, which every ministry, department, and agency uses. Mm. So for anyone to come and say, ah, KCC explained the cost of roads, he's really playing a, a psychology that is wrong mm. on the public. Mm. Then that means... All the roads procured by UNRWA are inflated. All the water services procured by Minister of Water are inflated. That means every agency of government has inflated costs. Yet all these, mm. the services that are contracted out are a derivative of a market-driven process. So the problem with City Hall will be politicized. Politicians have politicized the process. Everything must be criticized mm. even if... It's following a tried and tested process. All right. Now, yeah, you need to explain one thing here now. Yeah. The 350 billion. Yeah. If you had correctly tendered out yeah. uh, the the works, how then did you realize the 350 billion? Because that seems to be the issue. The Lord Mayor is saying this money has been saved after scrutiny, and it was established that uh, you had over, um, you had inflated the cost. Of course, for I don't want to use strong words here, but let me try to be a little bit. Rational and calm. Okay. Now, when we are planning for roads, mm. we de- we hire consultants to prepare designs for these roads, and part of the design process, you have to prepare a, what we call an engineer's estimate. Now, to prepare the engineer's estimate, you use historical prices of previ- previously tendered out works. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. From the his- history of previously tendered out works, you look at what are the average unit rates. Now, those are the ones you use to estimate and plan. Now, those are the ones that you use to determine the budget. So you budget before... Uh, we, we, we budget tender. before we go to tender. Okay. Now, we budget based on historical trends. Mm. Okay? Mm. It's a scientific process. Mm-hmm. Now, so you budget. Now, then you go into a competitive process where the market determines the prices. Okay. okay? Mm. Now, all these are scientific processes. And you cannot now begin saying, oh, so-and-so inflated costs are tender. Mm. When there is a, a scientific process that led to the estimate. So when you uh, made a prediction based on the uh, past rates, yes, uh, this three hundred and fifty billion was inbuilt. But not so the three fifty. Re- we had a budget of nine hundred and eighteen billion. Nine hundred and eighteen billion. Yes. Okay. We go out to tender. Mm. Each contract, each lot had a minimum of about five or, or six international bidders. Okay. Each one desiring to win the job. Each of them can undercut each other for a variety of reasons. Some of them are trying to enter the market. It's all for the benefit of the client. Mm. Okay? Mm. If they decide to depress the prices and absorb the risk, if they're absorbing losses, that is not our business. Okay? Mm. That comes as a benefit. So the contracted out value of works for the five lots became $718 billion. Now, in case there was any corruption, would have reason to consume that $200 billion. Mm. Would be motivated to, to take that $200 billion. If at all, the process is not watertight, okay? Mm. The process is watertight enough to, to make sure that the benefits the public derives from that competitive process are 
revealed. So that's how we, because of the frugal and robust procurement process we followed, we were able to save that money. Not because the Lord Mayor no, 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 no. complained about this. No, that was, I mean, I don't want to talk about the politics of this thing. All right. Okay. Mm. Why? What is the politics? Because I'm, 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 we, are, we are looking at issues of uh, accountability and service delivery. Uh, you, the, the this, is, this is almost the third time you're talking about the, the politics of this the, thing. The politics of it is that mm. people don't want to appreciate when professionals are doing their work. Okay. If the prices had come, up, come out higher than our estimate, the Lord Mayor would not even know. Mm. Or the politicians would not, would not even know. It's because we are professional, we are diligent, and we are experienced people. We're able to do this work. Once there is a benefit, we reveal it. Mm. Now, the politician will, at the end of the day, claim that <clears throat> the prices were inflated, whereas not. Many of those contractors are going to absorb losses. In fact, the last time I was in Parliament, they were saying, why do you give this very, very low-cost contract? Contracts were bidding so low. Because many times you struggle with them. All right. Well, we also saw during a certain council session where the Lord Mayor actually said that uh, some of the people who are involved in the same profession uh, that you're talking about, uh, the ones who are actually whistleblowing and saying this is too much, some of them were actually competitors in the bidding process, and they said that is just simply too much. So you, one would say that the Lord Mayor is also armed with information, the ability to consult other people who are professionals like you. The Lord Mayor is also about to go to hospitals and say the doctors are not doing the work. The Lord Mayor is going to go to schools and say the teachers mm. are probably not teaching well. Mm. You know, let's allow professionals to work. Let's Politics be divorced from technical work. This is a highly professional business. It's not a, a game. A game of saying words after the fact. Mm. Eh? Mm. When f- figures come out another way, you have a word to say. Come out another way, you say something. All right. It's quite uh, disturbing when you've done your best mm. to deliver the best for an institution and country that somebody can just try to disfigure or. Misname what you've done. All right. Now we, we've heard about the. Uh, we, we, you've had a response to what the Lord Mayor has actually been saying. How about the African Development Bank, the lenders? They also raised issues. What issues they raise? They raised a number of issues and even threatened no, the, to. Uh, the good thing. The mm, good thing in fact. What is it with the African Development Bank? Uh, the good thing the bank is financing road projects, not only in cases here but in about 54 countries. Okay. The procedures they follow are the same ones we followed. So we could not have an abnormal process in cases here and all other countries are performing using the same procedures are delivering different results. But, but you saw their letter. Their letter is talking about different things. All right. Let me Let's get, look at those issues. Let me get to the issues. Mm. First and foremost, this project was conceived in 2014. Mm. We went out to tender in about 2019, 2020. By then, the needs of the city were different. So... New roads were added in. As I told you, before we go out to tender, we prepare designs. And we also prepare environmental and social impact assessments of the road projects. Now, when you add in a project late, late at, at tender, mm. most times the designs have not factored in. The designs that were, were presented do not have environmental and social impact assessments. So what the bank said, all projects under their program mm. should have updated environmental and social impact studies done. We were late on doing that. They said, if we don't do it, mm. they are suspending. Good enough, we've been able to hit that milestone. Okay. The the easy as done. The other issue there is that we're supposed to have an environmental expert to make sure the safeguards in the environmental rules are complied with within the institution. Mm. The one wow. we had had hey, and we, for six months we didn't have one. We've re-engaged him and he's back at work. So that that's another milestone met. The other issue was the issue of... Uh, we normally do voluntary land donations, mm. okay, mm. instead of paying for land, in light of the improvement of the well-being of the areas where we improve our roads. Okay. So the mayors, the division mayors help us secure land from landowners, mm. and in exchange for that, we build the roads because we can't afford the cost of buying land in the city, which is very expensive. So what the bank said, do a proper valuation report. Disclose to the donees how much is the worth of the land they're giving up, Mm. okay, Mm. before they give it up. Of course, realizing the challenge we're going to face with that, we've decided to ask the chief government value advisors, what's the land and property value uplift that comes as a result of 
improving roads when we implement them. Mm. And the chief government valley has advised, whenever we upgrade roads in cities, in other cities around around the, in the country, mm. the land and property value uplift is about 30 to 50 percent. So we shall use that metric to show that in exchange for the land you give us, this is the uplift you get on your land. So there, is, there will be a trade that we can talk about. Mm. Now, so that that issue of uh, disclosure of valuation reports has been has been done, and the CGV has also approved all the valuation reports. Mm. The third and final, a fourth and final issue was the issue of there was counterpart funding that was supposed to be used to purchase land for a lorry park and bus depot, mm. as well as compensating any individual whose perimeter wall or property will affect adversely. Because we don't pay compensation, we restore. Part of that money is supposed to be used for that effect. So F- Minister of Finance was supposed to give us a uh, counterpart funding of $41 billion. None had been released ever since the project credit started. Mm. So Minister of Finance has released $20 billion for the third quarter, $15 billion of which is going towards that compensation issue. Mm. So all the four issues have been dealt with. All right. The, the notice that came from the African Development Bank was to the effect that uh, if you do not do that, address the th- issues they had raised, effective today, they will be withholding the funding. What True. is the status? Yes, yesterday, of, we wrote to, yesterday we wrote to Minister of Finance updating them on the status of each, each of the issues I've told you. Mm. Minister of Finance also immediately wrote to African Development Bank and I'm sure if at all there was an imposition of suspension, would have none today. So there's nothing to do with uh, corruption? There's Not at nothing all. Nothing to do Far with from delayed it. execution? Far works. from it. Mm. Far from it at all. There's nothing to do with corruption in there? Mm. Nothing to do with delayed implementation of the project. It's to do with safeguards, mm. environmental safeguards <clears> on the project. Mm. Well, like, let's look at some of the roads that are um, are funded by this project. Uh, there, there are a number of roads in Kampala that in 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 bad shape. You will agree mm. with me. People have been complaining. True. Uh, you've been on social media for quite some time as KCCA, and I'm sure you've been seeing people tagging you there. Mm. Um, the roads are not in good shape. And people are wondering what is going on. Because uh, there's that notion, uh, the central government took over KCCA, and uh, the belief was that Kampala would be completely different from what it used to be. But things are getting out of hand. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'll respond like this, uh, in order to be to put you into proper context. Mm. KCCA collects about $100 billion every year. $100 billion. $100 billion. Mm. That's the revenue we collect as KCCA. Our wage bill as the institution is about two hundred and fifty billion. Two hundred and fifty billion wage bill, paying for the politicians and the technical people. What we collect is not even sufficient to meet our our wage bill. So, before you even what begin, you retain, what we collect. You said you collect about a hundred billion. billion. Mm. Now to pay the That's wages annually. Yes. Mm-hmm. To pay the wages mm. for our staff. You need two hundred and fifty billion. billion. Is this monthly or annual? That's annual. Okay. So starting from there, mm. if KCC was retaining its collection and doing its own business, we would not even be able to pay the staff and the both the technical and political wing. So that puts in perspective that if government doesn't come in to subsidize KCCA's activities, mm. would, there would be a serious crisis. So how come you're being paid too much than what you actually collect? There's a big mismatch here. I don't understand this at all. KCCA is almost a government, mm. all, all I can say. Uh, it's almost a government. I mean, when they're democratic... Well, okay, KCCA is almost a government, but we, we expect you to be exceptional. Uh, you, well, you heard our city. Yes, you heard the city. And already, by the way, our staffing levels, as we speak, our staffing level is about 60%. 60%? Yeah. So if we were fully staffed, we'd even need more resources. What are you people doing? <laughs> we need to understand this deeper. Now, Which kind of people now, are actually being paid $250 let's, billion? Let's go to the... You look at other, <coughs> agencies, you look at other uh, government agencies. Mm. The case is we have a department of revenue, mm. a department of... Uh, a director of revenue, treasury, education and social services. We have uh, physical planning. We have engineering and technical services. We have uh, audit. Basically, you can mirror government in KCC. And in all those departments, if, the services are wanting. Well, I mean, from what we have heard from the members of the public, 
you can never achieve a hundred percent on everything. Uh, I know the issues, the challenges. Mm. The, the challenges do exist. Uh, I cannot say that we are performing at a hundred. I'm sure even Radio One has its own issues. Every institution has its own challenges. There will be challenges in service delivery. Mm. Uh, but look at the resources you're given. What can they? get you out. Now, I'll give you an example. We have a strategic plan, which was again launched by our good Lord Mayor about four years ago, because you're always citing him. Mm. Uh, four, three, four, three, four years ago. He has been here with that strategic yes. plan. That strategic plan is requires us to have a, um, has a budget outlay of $7 trillion. That's $1.4 trillion every financial year. Mm. Our budget, the last uh, this financial year, mm was about 550 <coughs> billion. Mm. If you deduct the wage bill, you remain with 300 billion. So if you contrast the 300 billion versus the 1.4 trillion, it can give you a reflection on the services you're getting. There's a mismatch between the resources we get vis-a-vis mm. -vis <coughs> the requirements to implement the strategic plan. So that should be the starting point. As you ask any questions, why? services are limited or right. why they're less than <clears throat> ideal all right engineer Luimbazi. yes we need to go for a break now uh, dear listeners stay tuned to radio one fm 90 and keep your comments coming use the whatsapp line which is 0703 090 090 when we return we'll try to make sense of the, the budget allocated to SCCA and uh, what the management actually wants uh, to be done what would be the possible interventions to actually ensure that at least we have good roads which are not only constructed, but also maintained throughout the year. Stay tuned to Radio 1 FM 90. We continue after this break. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Thank you for staying with us on Spectrum, live on Radio 1 FM 90. My name is Kenneth Lukwaganderson, your host. And my guest this evening is engineer David Luimbazi. He is the deputy executive director at the Kampala Capital City Authority. And our discussion is on how KCCA management is responding to the outcry of your members of the public about um, the state of the roads. Please share with us your views using our WhatsApp line, which is 070-3090-090. And uh, Ms. engineer Luimbazi will be responding to some of uh, those comments uh, that are coming in. I can see a number of them already from Bob in Busavala and a number of other areas uh, who are writing in. I'll soon be reading them out uh, just when we conclude this segment of uh, uh, our discussion. So, engineer Luimbazi, the, the challenge is uh, funding. And when, when you talk to government, um, and I have, I've also seen you going to, to Parliament, what response are you getting? For instance, you say uh, you get very little um, to the extent that you cannot maintain roads. So what are we going to do? Mm. Mm. The good thing, uh, yesterday, yesterday, when we were lucky to be in the State House, mm. after hosting the NAM, I mean, the, the NAM Line Movement Summit, mm. the President hosted us to a luncheon to kind of appreciate the work we had done. Mm. Uh, as as the team from cases here, I'm told and some some flowers and trees you planted are already drying up. Well, I, I like your criticism that always comes from every corner. <laughs> but I'll, I'll get back to you. One of the issues you raised was the issue that we must prioritize. Mm. You cannot do everything at the same time. Okay, you know the roads are bad. Yes, everyone knows they're bad. Our roads have aged. We have a network of about two thousand one hundred, seven hundred of which is paved, kilometers of which is paved, and most of the paved network is over 30 to 40 years old. Mm. The average life of a road is about 20 years, max. So our roads are at that stage where they need to be rehabilitated and reconstructed. However, you need funds to be able to do that. We're st striving our best to even do portal patching, which is not even the right intervention for a road that is dead. Okay? That is just to soothe. It is like uh, you have so a cancer patient who's in hospice and you're giving them painkillers. That's what we're doing. Mm. In order to reduce the vehicle operating costs and travel time inconveniences, people suffer. So, <clears throat> the good thing, hope is on the way. We have this loan of $288 million from the African Development Bank, which is going to fix about 120 kilometers. 120 kilometers of the road. Initially, it was 70 kilometers, but with the savings we have, we're going to be able to fix about 100, between 100 and 120 kilometers. Okay. Now we have. <clears throat> Do you know when that is beginning? 
that's ongoing. These are some of the roads, uh, Port Bell Road, uh, Salama Road, mm. uh, the roads in the Jassu area, Sapolo Kagua. Mm. Those are the roads I'm talking about. I'll read you the entire list later. Mm. So, with that's $280 million available, which government has mobilized. We have a program financed by the World Bank called, called the Greater Kampala Metropolitan Area Urban Development Strategy. Mm. Six fifty million dollars is being advanced, of which KCC shall get about one thirty million again for road rehabilitation and upgrading. Okay, mm. another one thirty is coming into the port. We have lined up uh, another two fifty million euros, which we are trying to secure from the United Kingdom export finance mm. to fix many of the roads in the central division. That's where most of the old paved roads exist. They need to be revamped and redeemed so that they have a new life. A new all, all those are loans. Oh, yes, all those are loans. We, 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 Which we shall have to pay as people in Kampala. We have, uh, we have a choice to make. Mm. If you look at the... Every day in Kampala, people lose about a million dollars every day in vehicle operating costs and travel time costs. A million dollars. So every year, mm. we lose $365 million. These are unseen costs. It is you going to your garage to repair your car more frequently than you should if the road was good. So either we borrow to save that. Now that passive income can be used to do other things that are developmental in nature. Mm. So yes, we are borrowing, but borrowing with some science behind it. What's the cost the public is incurring by continuing to endure bad roads? So when you say borrowing and people are going to pay, yes, we borrow and we shall pay, but we are saving a greater cost that will have otherwise been used to export jobs to Japan, to Dubai, and everywhere. So you look at that as well. Mm. So now these borrowings, okay, are going to give a good relief to Kampalans in terms of roads. For how long? How, after we've done this work, so for how long would we probably see a crisis like this? What crisis? We have had a crisis with potholes. <laughs> you yourself talked about a cancer patient yes. that uh, even if we work on the roads now uh, the there's way, likely uh, the, a period the, in the future the, the as an engineer put, the way you're putting it is like, when you know that we'll the way have you're problems putting, you're putting it is like there's no hope there's a lot of hope there's a crisis yes I don't know because it has been diagnosed. the hope seems to be in borrowing and that's not sustainable why isn't it sustainable you imagine we're losing 365 million dollars every year mm. every year we're going to we have borrowing lined up to the tune of about six hundred million dollars, which we shall repay over fifteen years. Multiply three sixty five by fifteen and see what number you're talking about vis a vis the amount we're borrowing. Simple math. Mm. Okay? Mm. Just one loan which we're borrowing from United Kingdom Export Finance will is worth the saving we make a year. All right. So, so the mathematics is quite obvious. So after we've worked on all these roads, yes. we'll need rehabilitation, which also requires a budget. Uh, how is KCC handling that is- issue of rehabilitation? What kind of money would you need, at least annually, to be able to uh, work on the roads? Because I'm actually told one of the problems you face is that even the rehabilitation budget is still on a low side. Oh, of course, the, the financing for KCC has been on a low side, but we've been able to, we're putting up an argument, and everyone is becoming evident. 70% of the traffic. Education, those are constants. Then the residuals are used to now fix infrastructure. Now, over time, mm. we borrow to be able to fix a problem and then be able to redeem it when we're in a good position. Mm. Now, I was talking about the stuff we have in KCC earlier. Mm. Mm. We have 469 councillors. 469. 469. Mm. We have five mayors, five division mayors, mm. five deputy division mayors, five speakers, five deputy speakers, and a Lord Mayor and one Deputy Lord Mayor. Those are the, those are the, and over 2,000 staff in the authority. Those are the numbers that we're talking about. And you're being paid handsomely, we're actually told. We're doing a lot of work as well. Mm. 
<coughs> don't, don't at, one po- at one point, we, we had that uh, story where a driver was actually being paid much more than some people at KCC. I'm not aware about that. You're moment, not aware. At the moment, at the moment, the driver they are, they are following the public service scale, mm. which is uniform ac- across all government government uh, entities. All right. So I wouldn't think the prices, uh, the, the rates for drivers. Are risks getting lost in translation. <laughs> you should not be defensive, but explain and educate the general public about the point he's making. That's our one comment from uh, James there. Then somebody asked, does KCCA have, uh, does, KCCA, does KCCA has a unit cost for one kilometer road construction? Does it mean that if all tenders ask for 20 billion per kilometer, they will award the contract? Somebody is wondering. Another one says, you must have internal figure before you go for bidding. You must have a figure engineer. That is Bob listening in from Busabala. Then somebody else writes and said, I don't know the engineer can convince us, but anything. Uh, but let me continue. Honestly, with roads and politics, I can say Uganda is doomed. I hear a scientific cost for a standard kilometer of a road. Somebody disputes that. We have Daham Ashraf listening from Lubaga who says, Spectrum, that gentleman is unbelievable. His economics works unbelievably too well. Uh, no more to say. Then we have another comment. Good evening, Anderson. I hear Chinese in Kenya construct roads, but the cost of roads in Uganda is higher compared to those of Kenya. Yet even the roads in Uganda cannot last long. What brings about the difference in the cost? Then somebody else, Joseph Rice, said, we have seen roads constructed within a short time. Those roads get spoiled. It, is that because of the open bidding process and contractors undercutting to win these contracts? The contractors end up cutting costs in the construction process and we end up with poor quality roads. A recall listening in from Tororo says if you want to know that money exchange hands for one to get the contract, look at the quality of works because it becomes very difficult to supervise mostly when your mouth was soaked. God help Uganda because we have hyenas in the butchers. We have another comment. Fraud is embedded in the procurement process. There is no politics. The engineer knows it very well and his cronies ensure that consultants and contractors factor in fraud, making the process appear market determined. They literally discuss with the bidders what to quote. Reserve prices are discussed and embedded as they are cut. That's Stephen there with that comment. Otherwise, how does the good engineer explain their luxury lifestyles and numerous apartments and arcades on their use scale salary? That's a comment made by Stephen. Engineer must come clean. Northern Bypass was constructed at 6 billion a kilometer. Muyembe Nakapiri Pit Road was constructed at 4.4 billion a kilometer. This involves removing mud or topsoil and set stone base. Now, let engineer tell us which road in KCC requires such technicalities to cost 6 billion per kilometer. The engineer should stop beating around the bush and accept that the costs were inflated. Another comment from Mukalazi, who is saying, um, Hello, Spectrum. What Mr. Mukalazi is saying, he went through competitive bidding, is a testament of everything wrong with this country. Will you buy a shirt of 20K at 10 million simply because it went through competitive bidding? The problem with the likes of Mr. Mukalazi is that they come to be defensive, whereas uh, oftentimes simply acknowledging errors and gaps can help remedy any wrong perception. The estimates being done by professionals doesn't mean that they cannot be manipulated. They just need to reduce the anger and find ways of working with the politicians. The presentation by the Lord Mayor is unfortunately what people down already perceive, whether told or not. That is Joseph there. Those are some of the comments that we have, if you can respond to any. No, I'll, I'll respond to all. I will not leave any, any, any comment out. Mm. Why am I combative? I'm combative because there's so many lies out here. Mm. And by the way, we've been leaving this space for the politicians to dominate. And no more. Yeah, because these, these, I mean, uh, you bring a doctor here and let a politician teach a doctor how to treat a patient. Mm. Bring an engineer and let a politician teach me how to deal with the road. They, I mean, let's everyone stay in their lane. This is a business where you get trained for some time, you work for a long time, you get registered by a professional body. We are held to certain ethical standards. Mm. We are not, we're not just uh, laymen, we are not traders. We are professionals. We are, 
we are registered professionals doing work. We have lawyers there who also have legal practice certificates. So that when, said, when you somebody also have oversight. When somebody comes and maligns what you're doing, mm. you're bound to get very, very disturbed. And if I'm not disturbed, actually, I would, I would have no reason to sit in that in that in that office, in the in the city hall. Mm. Now we got the issue of unit costs. This issue of open tendering or this procurement process are tried and tested procedures which are applied in all government agencies. I'm not going to belabor that. And the purpose of these processes is to make sure that value for money is achieved. Anyone who comes here and deceives you that after following those procedures, value for money has been lost. Cor- uh, uh, corruption or no corruption. Is KCC on the PPD portal? Well, yes, we are. Okay, you are. Yeah. All right. So, these established processes should not be abused by politicians. How about Other, the, the many, like saying many times you discuss these uh, costs and even embed them? Those yeah. are conspiracy theories. Those are conspiracy theories. You'll imagine that so and so is sitting down. These are guys who are trying to win business. They are trying to make money. These are companies that are listed on, the, on, on stock exchanges. Mm. These are big companies. They are trying to get business. It is not a game. It is a cutthroat game. So for somebody to begin imagining that all oh, deals are being cut while people are trying to win jobs is really expecting too much of me to be tolerating that kind of thought. Mm. Estimates before tendering. We hire international consultants to prepare these designs. Now, again, these are guys who give us professional indemnity insurance certificates to guarantee that they've done a thorough and a fair job for the client. They cannot give us that insurance if at all they've inflated prices. So, then the issue of the economics. Everything you do, there must be a cost-benefit analysis. Mm. We build these roads to give people a good way of life in the city, to reduce vehicle operating costs, to reduce travel time, to reduce emissions, and much more. So, without any cost-benefit analysis, then there's no point of making a decision to make good on a poor road or, or, or just leave it the way it is. Cost of roads in Uganda are higher than Kenya. Mm. Kenya is near the cost. We are a landlocked country. There is all reason. All the oil products are needed to build roads have to be hauled all the way from Mombasa into Uganda. Okay? Mm. Land in Kenya, land in Uganda is owned by people. Mm. We use gravel, gravel materials to build roads. Mm. The market determines the cost of gravel. Mm. Government doesn't own land. So, most of the requirement, the equipment is also imported. Now, factor that all into why costs in Uganda could be higher. Fortunately, we're not much higher than Kenya. I'd like to assure the public. All right. Roads constructed in a very short time, there's cost cutting. Again, the intervention we do is different. Like now, during the Nandaline Movement Summit preparation, we do did what we call light rehabilitation. Mm. It is a fast intervention intended to, because Patching has a limit, okay? Mm. So we rip up the entire road, rip up the base, reprocess it, relay it, and seal it. We get a life of about five to seven years. You can also reconstruct a road which will take, now, that, that intervention may take you two to three months if you have the time. If you reconstruct a road conventionally, it will take you three years. Mm. With a three-year product, you'll, need, you'll get a 15 to 20-year design life. Somebody is giving another example here. Uh, that's Yamsi Namasua. Can I finish my the it, comments? It's just almost the same. Mm. Somebody is saying uh, Kafumbe Mukasa Road, which was constructed a long time ago, is still intact, while a road behind ShopRite is already dead. It's still about the quality of the roads that you're making in, in Kampala. I'll talk about that one. Mm. Money exchanges hand at uh, at tendering again. That's a conspiracy, and, you're if, if, and, and the, the laws are there. If you you've seen somebody involved in corrupt practices, the offices of the IGG are open. Statutes and corruption is open. Police is also open. Mm. If you've seen those people, please take them there. Stop speculating and speaking on radio. No one's going to be arrested by anyone speaking on radio. People will be arrested if we go to IGG and statutes and corruption. So sometimes when I hear these kind of issues, I get disturbed. All right. Fraud in the procurement process, Same I thing. cannot speak about it now. Mm. How do we explain our lifestyle? I, that one again. The, report, the a, IGG does a lifestyle audit. If mm. you're sure mm. Engineer Limbas is leading a, a, a life beyond his means, mm. there's a place to report. Don't just hurl these accusations on radio. No one is going to be arrested on radio. The arrest will happen if you go to the Inspector General of Government. Now, the, I come to the issue of the Northern Bypass. Mm. 
na Kapiripirit road that those roads are cheaper compared to the ones in yeah. Kampala. Mm. Now let me give you something surprising. The contractors and bidders who be, built those roads, some of them participated in these tenders in KCC. Mm. Unless when they come to KCC, they get poisoned by corruption. Mm. These same contractors are bidding. The same contractors in Uganda doing work in UNRWA, in local governments, in Minister of Lands, are the same contractors bidding for our work and competing to give out those prices. For somebody to claim that those actors, when they come to City Hall, they all of a sudden behave differently, is really pulling Maybe, maybe you infect them. Uh, no, I don't think. It is I, just, I, that's what the listener was saying. Uh, you know, that the, are you in bed? The, the politics here is so, so nasty mm. that anything will be said, even what does not make sense. If we are indeed involved in that corruption, people claim, the Office of the Inspector General of Government are open. Mm. The Central Corruption Unit is open. Please, I dare anyone to take there a complaint or evidence supporting those allegations. I mean, when you hear all this, you get disturbed. Mm. We are professionals, not for, for, for nothing, but for the time we put into the practices we do. All right. I have so many other comments actually coming in here. Somebody is wondering why you still use um, dilapidated plans. Uh, the roads in Kampala are still uh, in shape of 1900 compared to what is happening in other countries. When will you actually improve and uh, start doing roads like those that are in other cities? Some other person is saying you are actually fit for political office, given the arguments that you've been making here on top. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going to politics. I don't know <laughs> what, what that means. And somebody says, Casey is not a Lie at least. The story of KCC inefficiency <laughs> is a historical agent. The attempt to make it a parastatal failed and the temporary takeover by the president's office made things worse. Despite KCC's bidding to manage transport for Kampala, for God's sake, when shall we start improving our city? Somebody brings in the issue of transport again. Then somebody says, Moffat, thanks for the program. I'm disturbed by the response of your guests. If you have people like that uh, in engineering, not planning for 20 years or more, then we have a club of looters. Then somebody says, KCC uh, plan for 30 years and above for roads. Do we have plans? If we have, why do we construct, for example, the non-motorized transit road, yet we have uh, zero ways of implementing it? Who are in charge of uh, projects? Time is not our best ally. We are fast uh, running out of time. Let's do a roundup. If you can respond to some of those issues and then I'll tell us the way forward. I'll respond, at KCCA. I'll respond to some of those issues. Mm. Uh, of course, now, when people look at urban roads, urban roads are different from national roads. Mm. For urban roads, you must provide walkways. You must provide lighting. Mm. You must provide... Uh, the facility to provide, you must have covered drains. You cannot have open drains, which you can have on national roads. All these are cost drivers that increase the cost of an urban road. Now, we can decide, and wherever we go, they say, we must provide places, decent places for people to walk. Actually, 60% of the urban population walk to work. Mm. People use walk to work, 60% move by by walking. Not taxi, not border border, mm. not mini, not a bus. Mm. Now, so we must provide them decent walking facilities. Then they must also be protected by having lighting. Now, these are costs. You don't find these on national roads. So you cannot just compare a national road and an urban road. The kind of, the things we think about are far different from what you do on a national road. National road is for moving from one place to the other. This one's for accessibility. Moving to work, moving to a supermarket, and that, and, that, and, that, and, and all the rest. Mm. Now, uh, if you, you're saying I'm wrapping up, I just want to go back to the issues you raised. I mm. mean, the notice to suspend financing uh, to cases here. I'd like to assure the public that's not going to happen. We've been able to respond to the issues the bank raised, and none of those issues were related to corruption or high unit costs, as some other people have tried to allege. Now, regarding the the outlook of roads in the city, especially infrastructure, I mean, the issues we're fo focusing on right now are roads, drainage, mm. and garbage. Those are our key, most important priorities in City Hall right now. Mm. And for roads, we've lined up sufficient programs to make sure that in the next three to five years, we've redeemed the life of roads in the city. So three to five years, three we'll to five better years. roads. We should have a really different way you'll perceive, roads are perceived in the city. Okay. We should have rehabilitated them, uh, uh, lit them up, provided walkways on most of them. Mm. Regarding drainage, drainage we are, we're trying to negotiate for some more financing to make sure all the stormwater drains are lined, to make sure that the flooding, the frequent flooding in the city is abated. 
for garbage, we're looking at, we're going towards a zero waste plan. Mm. Our landfill in Chitezi is full right now. We have only four acres, which are going to take us about one and a half years. So we're trying to see how do we turn waste into value. Uh, we establish a factory that will consume this waste, turn the waste into briquettes, fertilizers, and other useful products that can be bought by the public. So by so doing, reduce the need to depend on landfills, the need to expensive cost of government to be able to manage waste as we do at the moment. Well, we have more comments coming in. Unfortunately, time is not our best ally. I want to thank you, uh, Engineer. I still have uh, four minutes. David Lugimbazi, <laughs> Deputy Executive Director at KCCA. Yes. There will always be another time for you Please. to actually come and explain a number of issues. For instance, we didn't touch on the issue of uh, transport in the city, how you intend to improve transport. There are issues there around buses, issues of border-border stages, uh, among others. Uh, how do we have a sustainable city uh, going forward? And I'll Indeed, accord you some time Absolutely. to come and explain these issues. Well, I've been your host, Kenneth Lukwag Anderson. Up next, we're going to have the news in English with Miss Josephine Dakano, and then thereafter, we'll have the Soul Train with BB Junior.